Amen. Shall we open our Bibles to Genesis chapter 1? We're going to read from verse 26 through to 28. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What I'm going to talk about actually starts from verse 27. But for us to understand it clearly, we had to read verse 26. At some point in creation, God had made everything he wanted to make. He looked at all of them. But there was something missing. Man. It was a story. You know, when you're reading a story, this happened, that happened, that happened, then this happened. My verse 26 started with then. Which means, now pause everyone who is listening because something dramatic is about to happen here. Okay? If you want to tell me how your day has been, you say, I woke up in the morning, I had a shower, I went shopping, I went to this place, I saw my sister, then I went to the bank. What that tells me is that everything you said is important, but the most important one is the one that you laid emphasis on because that's where you're trying to drag my attention to. So after God created the trees, the water, the days, the birds, the animals, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Let them have dominion. Before God made man, God knew what man was coming to do. The scientists said, it was an evolution. They believed they were apes. Before by mistake, something happened, then they became men. I don't belong to that group. I know they might be ape in the society, but I am not of them. And I want to believe that you're here today because you're actually a creation of God. I am not a mystic of science. Because I'm not a mystic, I was a purpose built being you know if I'm, when I'm building my house I was talking about my house yesterday evening I said I'm, I'm waiting for the five bedroom detached bungalow built with me in mind you know I could see it in my dream that was how God saw us in his mind and then he made us Let's move on to 27. Because we have the knowledge of verse 26. Because God had already decided what he wanted man to do. So, God created man in his own image. What I said to our ladies then is, an image is a replica of you. Okay? The other day I took a picture and my brother saw it and said, Oh, you look like a younger version of mom. Yes, because I am a version of her. But you know the amazing thing is, a version of you can still have things that are not you. Okay? But your exact image has got everything that you have. Let's take it down. I've got a mirror here, six foot, standing in front of me. Is it possible? I know I've got a broad nose. Is it possible for me to look in that mirror and see myself with a pointed nose? It's not possible. I've got very nice legs. Is it possible for me to look in that mirror and see myself with my legs like this? It's not possible. Why? Because it is an exact image of me. 
Now let's go to verse 27. So, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Who is God? The Almighty. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. The Creator of the Universe. The I am that I am. The lily of the valley. The bright morning star. The one that nobody can question. The all powerful. So he made me. Omobola. An exact image. Of who he is. Whatever. God is. You are.
Because the original person is not there. But it looked so much like them. They made them to measure. Now, we're image of God. You are an image of God. I am an image of God. Don't ask me why you have short hair and I have long hair. That doesn't have anything to do with it. This spirit man that's inside of you, that spirit of God, is what has replicated itself inside us. What do you do with an image? A while ago, I think we were going to have Chichi's passport. The requirement was that we needed some documents to be notarized. Okay? They said, send us photocopies of these, 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 these documents, but they must be notarized. Notarized means somebody who is of a very good reputation puts a stamp on it and puts their signature to say, this actually, even though it's a photocopy, is exactly what the original looks like. So, we held our original document and we sent the notarized copy. And anywhere that the original has access to, the notarized copies of those documents had access and they could do exactly the job that the originals would do. In the court of law, anywhere in the world, it is acceptable as the original. After God made us a copy of himself, an image of himself, he did not just let us go like that. Can you read verse 28, the very first part? What did he say? Then God blessed them. Then God blessed them. That was the notarization. That was the seal of authentication. Saying, this is really me. God saying, even though I am in heaven, this one can do all that I can do. And he is all that I am. If you have a pair of shoes that's from somebody called call the name of a very nice fanciful female shoes. Yeah. Let's say you have a handbag that's designed by Gucci. Yes. Okay? And you're carrying it. And all the other ladies attending the same occasion are also carrying theirs. And yours does not have Gucci written on it. They either tricked you and sold you a fake one. Or the person who made it forgot to put a, a seal of their approval on it. And when you're selling it back, the person who's going to buy it from you will tell you, I'm sorry I can't pay that much. He hasn't got the seal on it. But because God knew that this world is going to be as it is, God put a seal on us. We've got the trademark. You've got the blessing. That is the importance of that blessing. After God made us a copy of him, he blessed us. When God blesses you, you're made. You're made. The day we realize this, See, I tell you, brethren, the day, one day I woke up and I thought, look, God, if it's in the Bible, then it must be true. I am blessed. I am blessed. <laughs> I have God's approval. The same with every one of you here. When you know that you have God's approval, human approval will not be a problem for you. People struggle with it. Nobody likes me. Nobody wants to be with me. Nobody wants to talk to me. Nobody calls me. We go extra, we go the extra mile just to get people's approval. What do you need it for? When God approves of you. The Bible says when your ways are pleasing unto God, it makes even your enemies to be at peace with you. You don't have to go out of your way to go and make peace with you. He makes your enemies to come and be at peace with you. 
with you. As long as your ways are pleasing unto God. And what other ways can you be pleasing? He made you. Then he blessed you. What other thing do you need? I want you to touch, to tap yourself in the chest and say, I am an exact image of God. I have who he says I am. I can do all that he says I can do. Hallelujah. When we know this, our attitude changes. We don't walk with our shoulders down, defeated. Why? If every man on the surface of this United Kingdom can get grip of this knowledge, woo, you wake up in the morning and you say, God is awake. You go into work and you say, the exact image of God that has been notarized and blessed has come to work. <laughs> if you, I think about three weeks ago, one of my young ladies contacted me and said, I don't know what is happening at work. My boss is far more senior than me in age. I am the one with the brain. I do the job. But when it comes to taking credit, he steps in. And I can't move on higher because everybody keeps thinking it's him. And he's not even a Christian. I said to her, I said, how much do you love this, your boss? She said, well, I love him as a boss. I said, but, but I can't move on any further if things keep on like this. I said, okay. I'm a very nice person. But there are situations where niceness is not good enough. I said, are you willing to do what I want you to do? She said, anything. I said, okay. I said, get in early. And walk into his office. And declare whatever you want. I said, start from now. I said, I know it's not me that will tell you. You know what you want. Say it. She said, I understand. That was the end of the discussion. On Tuesday, she sent me a message. Hmm, things have happened. I said, you see, the real details of it, if you don't want to tell me, don't tell me. She said, I can't believe it is that easy. You are an image of God. When somebody tries to cut corners with God, God deals with them. Okay? The people who tried it in the past, read your Bible, you find out. When the people decided that God and Dagon were on the same level, and God hates insults, you know what happened? They took the Ark of the Covenant, which in the Old Testament signified the presence of God, and they put it next to an idol. By the time they woke up in the morning, the arms of the idols were chopped off. Who did it? Somebody did it. Then they said, oh, well, it's all right. They put the arms, stuck it back. I don't know the kind of God that you have to help them to stick, the, put their hands. They kept doing it until one day. Somebody did it. 